In this part of the tutorial, we're going to look at how we can add dummy content to our mock-up in order to complete it, and finish off by adding some padding and some margins in order to space out the content so it looks a bit neater. In this example, I'm using split view in Dreamweaver. This allows me to see the code and the design view, which gives me, like I said before, an approximation of what the page should look like in a browser at the same time. The advantage with newer versions of Dreamweaver, I think CS4 and 5, is that they allow you to switch between source code, i.e. the HTML, and also the style sheet and any other files attached. So the style sheet is what we're going to adjust in order to tweak the layout. And then we're going to add in content to the HTML. So remember the style sheet is in control of the look and the HTML itself contains the actual content. So what we're going to do first is to go to a website called lipsum.com, L-I-P-S-U-M.com, and use that to generate some dummy content. So all we'll do is generate three paragraphs and hit, hit the generate button. That's going to give you three paragraphs that you can copy and paste over to your mock-up. So if you select over them with the mouse, right click and hit copy. And then one thing to note about this is when you're copying it in, um, if you copy from a source that has formatting into design view in Dreamweaver, it will retain that formatting. So for example, if I select uh, this paragraph within my uh, article section and hit paste, what you'll see is when I look back at the code, it's placed in the paragraphs for me, which is what I wanted it to do. So the good thing about that is you can take um, elements from websites, you can take elements from uh, certain other applications and it's going to retain it as long as you paste into design view rather than the code view. So that's kind of a bit too much. So I'm just going to cut that uh, back a little bit as I only want a little bit for my first article. Then what I'm going to do is take one of the paragraphs and place it into the second article. Notice here I'm doing this in design view, but I'm leaving my code view open so that I can check that it's doing the paragraphs correctly. Then finally I'm going to do the same thing for my aside, and I'm going to split some of those paragraphs up. So the first thing to do obviously um, is to remove that earlier formatting. I've got a rule for P for paragraph and currently uh, it's on the color orange. So I'm going to set that to uh, close to black color, triple three. We should also notice is that I'm using uh, CSS styles window in Dreamweaver just to do some quick edits. I'm not recommending it to do um, writing a whole lot of code because sometimes it writes in a slightly inefficient way. Um, but it's good for just changing colors around like that. The second thing I noticed now that I've got paragraphs in is they're a little bit hard to read. Now, a good thing you can do to help that out is to add in some line height. So what I'm going to do on my P rule is to double click on it to open it up and just go to the rule for line height and specify something a little larger. So um, I might put in a line height of say 20 and if I click apply, then I can see in the background it starts to space them apart. And I might try 22. Just spaces those lines apart, makes them easier to read. Then click on OK to confirm that change. So the other problem then is that I've got my text right at the edge of all of these boxes. So what I'm going to do is to add some padding into each box in order to space it away from the edge. So bear in mind that padding is inside of a box and margins are outside of a box. So the first thing I might do is create a gap between the aside and the uh, article. So that will create a small area of space so that no sort of starts of lines are butted up against the ends of lines inside the uh, sections of the articles. So instead of using the styles window, I'm going to switch to my CSS and start working in there. So what I can do is add a margin to the left hand side of my uh, aside. But the first thing I'm going to do is create enough space. So although adding a margin to the left there will push that element over, 
there won't be enough space in the overall wrapper for it to exist and it will slip down below. So I'll just show you the effect of that. So if I say margin left, let's say 15 pixels, it jumps down below it because there's not enough room. So it's created the gap, but not enough room in the overall layout. So if I have a margin on the left, I have to subtract that from the width. So margins, padding and borders all add to the width and height of an element. So if I do that, subtract it, then it's back in the right place. So then what I'm going to do is go over to my sections and put some padding inside there. So if I want to space on the left and right with padding, I can write it all in one line. I can say padding top, right, bottom, left. So I'm leaving top and bottom on zero. Remember you don't have to put uh, a PX value or whatever kind of unit you're working in uh, when you specify zero because zero is just zero in any um, particular unit of measure. So if I save that and click on design view you can see that it's expanded the box. So I need to subtract 15 plus 15 which is 30 away from the width. So I'll change 630 down to 600 and that corrects that layout. Then I might want to do the same thing for the header and for the nav in order to space them out. Uh, but for the nav I'm going to leave it because I will um, manage that when I deal with the actual menu items. So I'll go back to the header and do something similar. I will say padding and note that I'm keeping the padding the same for uh, parts of my layout. That's just for consistency um, to keep it all uh, in neat lines. So the line of the M there matches up with where the T exists. So that's my layout a little better spaced out. Um, using margins and padding um, will hopefully uh, give you a neater layout and always just try and make sure that text isn't on the edge of a box. Notice that welcome is still on the edge of the box but that doesn't matter too much in this instance because we're going to take away the background colors of this layout and uh, as a result you won't see um, that this is actually a box so shouldn't be too big a problem. Uh, and the last one we're going to deal with is just the footer so I'm going to go down to my footer and put in a similar approach to padding in there. So top 0, right 15, bottom 0, left 15 and then subtract it from the width and that's just spaced it out a little there. So I'm going to go to file save and what you'll notice is it saved my HTML. What you should note when you're working in Dreamweaver and probably the same for most applications you might work with, especially in Adobe ones, they put an asterisk on the end of the file to show you um, that something isn't saved. So although I've been working on my style sheet, it's actually a separate file. So you actually have to click in that window. You can see it's highlighted with a gray border now. Then go to File, Save. That will save the style sheet. So that's uh, using dummy content, margins and padding um, to sort out your layouts. So the last thing we'll do is just to remove those background colors and add in some rules for our headings to make them really stand out from the layout. So what I'm going to do very quickly is just to go through all of my uh, style rules for the different sections. So the first one that's visible is header. I'm just going to click on the background color hex and hit delete. I'll go to nav, do the same, article, do the same, section in article, aside and footer. And then if you click on the style sheet and then back on design view, hopefully it will uh, eventually correct itself. So our layout is now uh, correctly spaced out. And what we're then going to do is add in some rules for our headings. So what I'm going to do is just go to the bottom of my style sheet and I'm going to uh, make a little comment that says typography. And in here I'm going to say that all of my headings, so h1, h2, h3, h4, it's unlikely I'll use h5 or 6 but we'll put them in too. 
we'll give them all a font family of Georgia. So really make them stand out from the rest. We'll make the uh, font weight um, lighter and we'll give them actually we won't give them a color in that particular rule because that would uh, give the color to every single size of heading and we don't want to do that. For now uh, having taken off uh, those background colors we really want to check what it looks like in a browser so we're going to go over to our actual folder so I'm looking in Will site and I'm going to open that with uh, a actual web browser um, such as Safari for example and double check that it looks like what I expected. So the good thing about this is we've now got um, a completely open slate to start uh, designing and tweaking and adding some real detail into our layout. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to uh, start coloring in headings and I'm going to leave you to do the same kind of thing for yours. So for my H1 I might select um, for example uh, a sort of mid blue and then for H2 I might choose to have a slightly lighter blue to keep that kind of color scheme uh, consistency going on. So you can see I've got an H1 there and then a different one there but then I might want to have a different style for my H1 in my header to my H1 within my article. So I'll write a rule for header space H1. So what it's worth pointing out at this stage is that whilst I've separated these with commas, these are all different rules, but they all have the same settings. Whereas this is a rule H1 inside header in a particular section of the page. So for header H1, I might want to uh, give it a different color. So I might make that red, for example and I might make the uh, font size a lot larger just to differentiate it from any other header. So I still want to use the H1 tag but I want it to look different. So I've made a context sensitive rule. I've made a rule that says that this H1 in this section is different from other ones. Okay so I'm going to leave you to crack on with uh, looking at how you can make the layout a bit more your own and in the next video we're going to look at more hyperlinking and creating an email link.